What's going on everybody? Jen Mint here with my first XM Studios Transformer statue. And I'll explain the thumbnail after the unboxing and the assembly. Interesting box here, not your traditional Marvel or DC box. It's got this grid pattern. It's got this kind of biography on the side, even though it looks like they did a uh, spelling error and didn't put the S in Soundwave in the little biography. But a uh, pretty interesting box. But we're not here for the box, right? We're here for the statue. So let's go ahead and jump into the unboxing. All right, here we go, guys. Huge box. It doesn't have an art print, but it does have the package contents. As you can see, this is a two layer piece with a ton of pieces. So let's go ahead and get that ready and uh, remove this big heavy lid. All right, now we'll go ahead and remove the straps and remove the top lid so we can see that first layer. And here we go, all wrapped in plastic and paper. Let's go ahead and remove that. And boom, here you can see all the pieces. All right, guys, we're gonna start off with one of his right hand pieces. He's holding a pistol. It looks like Megatron. I don't know what the deal is with that. He's got a scope on it. And then moving on to one of his little cassette tape transformers. This is laser beak, super cool. It looks like a cassette tape, Decepticon logo on the wings. And that's just one of four that we're gonna see on this piece. Here we have one of two chest plates for sound wave. You're gonna wanna remove that, but that's always so satisfying. So you have that nice glass look, Decepticon logo. There's a piece of plastic on the back as well. So you're gonna wanna take that off. And this is gonna be for the closed chest look. All right, guys, the next little proximity piece, if you will, is Rumble. Right now, he doesn't have his arms on him, but I'm digging it, man. He's got those huge Transformers legs and feet. The nice black and red paint job on him. All right, here we have one of the eject buttons for the chest. And then we have some paneling. These are the shoulder panels that'll go on to him. And then over here are for the legs. You have the nice blue and gray paint job. Here we have two weapons that will go on to Rumble's back. We'll show that off during assembly. Very intricate for some smaller pieces. You see the texturing and details. Here we have some weapons that are gonna go on Ravage. So those are gonna go on his legs, which we haven't seen yet. Another piece to Ravage, that's his tail. And the smaller eject button is for Soundwave in his transformed mode. Here we have a back cannon. It's got a piece of laser beaks leg. So that's where that piece will key into. So very cool looking cannon. And then we have one of the left arm switch out. So this is going to be the one so that it allows him to reach across his chest and kind of access the cassette deck in his chest and let out the other little transformers. And then here we have Ravage. So he looks awesome. Kind of giving me Voltron vibes, right? But like the little Black Panther type of transformer uh, cassette tape Decepticon. Love the sculpt and the details on this guy. And then the second chest display. So this one has another piece coming out of it. This is Red Bat. So this is like his chest opening up and Red Bat is gonna be flying out. So very cool. And here's the other left arm switch out. This one's gonna be pointing downward and it allows him to hold his huge rifle. Man, the intricacies here. And the paint job looks like battle damage. It doesn't look super sharp, it's a little muddy just like his right arm. So this one's gonna be outstretched, which he could either hold that pistol that looks like Megatron or just a pointing finger. But again, the sculpt looks great. The intricacies are there. Just like with the portrait, I love that red visor, the kind of face mask look to him. Just straight up G1 Transformer vibes, but with such a modern twist. So much time went into this sculpt, man. All right, so that's everything on the top layer. Here's the bottom layer. Still have quite a few pieces to go over, so let's get rid of the plastic and all the paper, and you can kind of get a glimpse on what we got going on so far. So first, these are the little platforms where the cassette tape transformer mode sound wave will rest on. So pretty nice little display. And here we have Rumble's arms with his kind of drill mechanisms. I don't even know what you would call those things, the things that pound into the ground. Here we have two of Soundwave's hands. One of them is the outstretched pointing finger. One of them is setting off the eject clasp on his chest. And then here Soundwave in transformer mode, the cassette tape deck, I love it. It's got so much weight to it, it's heavy. It's a nice little block and uh, just so cool uh, of an accessory. And then we have his huge cannon, his left hand switch out. Love that dirty metal look. 
Again, the intricacies in the sculpt are amazing. Huge weapon for Soundwave. Then we got his huge right foot. So man, this thing is chock full of detail. It's heavy. So much going on here. But it still has the classic G1 look. It's not like Bayformers. And then we have the other foot with the body. Again, what more can I say about the sculpt and, and how detailed it is? Incredibly detailed. This piece is super heavy. The exposed tape deck in his chest. I mean, what more could you ask for? It looks amazing. And then we have the base. So the base is all one color. It's kind of muddy, like a damaged Cybertronian war scene. We'll take a better look at that when we assemble them. And this one did come with the plaque. So we got Soundwave here with the XM Studios case. And you have that metallic plaque with Soundwave there. Pretty cool addition to this piece. All right, before we take on the task of assembling, I want to give a shout out to our sponsor, that's SpidermanBooth.com. They have the $30 mystery boxes. We are guaranteed five comics of retail value. One of those lucky boxes is going to have their giveaway prize, the Silver Surfer Issue 1 in a raw copy. Looks to be on the lower grade. That round will end on December 22nd, so scoop up a box, use code GEMIN to save 10%, and good luck on that GP. That same code also works for their sister site, Street Level Hero, slhla.com, who has exclusive variant covers with new drops every Tuesday and Thursday. That code is good on any item on the store every time you shop there. All right, base is on the table. We connected the leg to the torso uh, because you kind of got to have that together to put it into the base. It has the peg on the left foot and the right foot sits flush in a groove. Then we're gonna go ahead and get Rumble keyed in here as well. Kind of a tight squeeze, a long peg. Then we're gonna put on Rumble's arms, but I'm gonna have to actually take off this right arm to get his weapons on, but you know, you get a little trial and error sometimes with these assemblies. All right, then we'll get the left arm keyed in. And like I said, I had to remove that right arm in order to reach around and get the weapon on his back. Kind of hard to find the right angle. So now that that's there, we'll get his right arm back in place. And then we'll be able to swoop around and get the left gun on the left shoulder without removing the left arm. All right, then we're going to go ahead and get Ravage keyed in onto the leg here. I already put the weapons on Ravage and the tail. So it's just a matter of getting him keyed in. And there we go. Let's get some of those leg armor pieces on there. So that's the left leg and here goes on the right. And let's take a look at everything so far on the bottom. So yeah, he's on this destroyed robotic feature. It almost looks like there's some tank tread and even like a hand that he's stepping on. You can see rumble, we can see a little bit of ravage. And I think that that dull color does a good job of showing the color on Soundwave and the other Transformers. So I don't really mind that it's muddy and just kind of that brown look because really you kind of want that muted so it makes the other colors pop. So there goes what looks like a hand. Here goes that like tank tread that I was talking about. All right, and now on to the upper torso. First, let's go ahead and put on his left arm. We're gonna start with this one that's reaching across his chest. Let's go ahead and put the right arm, which is the only option for him. It'll stick straight out. Going to go ahead and put the hand on his left arm. Put the portrait in there. And then for the chest, we'll start off with that closed cassette tape deck. All right, swinging around to the back, we're going to put the shoulder armor on, on the right and on the left here. With those there, we'll go ahead and put that back cannon on. And then we can go ahead and get laser beak on the top. Some of these pieces were kind of hard to key in. Again, the angle you got to get right. They're kind of long, skinny pegs. But yeah, there we go. Laser beaks on top. So let's take a look at that torso. Amazing. I love the diorama aspect of this piece, right? You have all those uh, smaller transformers surrounding him. He's about ready to launch out his chest so Red Bat can get out. So kind of threatening, if you will, while he's pointing the gun. That looks great, man. The shine is there. So let's take a look at it when Red Bat is about to come out. Uh, like I said, it's like the hatch is opened a little bit. We'll switch out the arm since he's already launched the hatch. This one's just pointing down with that long rifle. And then we'll just change out the other hand just for good measure. And bam. So you can kind of get a couple of looks, right? Because you can do the gun in the right hand or the pointing with this look. I mean, however you want to do it. 
But yeah, a lot of presence on this piece, man. He looks great, commanding a lot of strength, and he's got a, an arsenal, an army with him. And you can't forget him in Transformer mode, the little Walkman or little cassette tape player. Love that. That's amazing. All right, guys, before I give my thoughts on it, let's go ahead and get some dimensions here. So Laserbeak seems to be the tallest part of this statue, coming in at just about 29 inches tall. The width and the depth, it, it, it depends on how you display it, but it looks like to be about 18 inches deep. The width can be only about maybe about 14, 13 inches, again, depending on how you angle it. Uh, and it's kind of an expensive statue, retailing about $1,800. Uh, the edition size is pretty low, though, just about $599. So, it looks good. I seem to have said good things about it during the unboxing and the assembly, so why am I in trouble? Why am I, oh no, what have I done? I really like this piece. I really like it a lot. It gets the Gem Min seal of approval. It's just that now I'm thinking, should I go back and get the others? The Megatron, the Optimus, the Starscream, the Bumblebee I'm not really too fond of, but uh, the Grimlock, the huge Grimlock that just came out. These are sold out pieces. I got to get them on the aftermarket. I don't really have any space to display these pieces if I collect this line. Unless I clear out where I'm storing my comic books right now, if I move that, I could make a little XM Studios Transformers display. What do you think, guys? Should I go all in on this line, pick up the older pieces, keep up with the newer ones? Leave me a comment, and I'm going to leave you with Soundwave spinning on the turntable. You just do me a favor and stay minty fresh. Peace.